In this session, we're going to take a look at working with raster objects in CorelDRAW X6. You know, in our previous sessions, we've gone through the vector tools, the interactive tools, the Bezier tool, and shapes in this getting started with CorelDRAW Graphics Suite X6 training series. But in this session, we're going to start looking at working with bitmap or raster objects in CorelDRAW. And we're going to take a very different approach to working with these objects in Draw because we at Advanced Artists, Advanced T-shirts.com, we work with spot colors for screen printing and apparel design. And we're really interested in having color management capability with our raster objects. In other words, the ability to color separate these objects and color manage them with spot colors. We're going to look very closely at monochrome bitmaps. We're also going to take a look at color management in CorelDRAW, and we're actually going to turn it off. Now, if you're dealing with output to wide format inkjets or other types of color output based on different substrates, there's some great videos on YouTube about color management in CorelDRAW that will show you everything that you need to know relating to working with those types of outputs in CorelDRAW X6. You can also work with your manufacturers to find out the way in which you need to set up your default color set settings in Draw and work with the color management in Draw. But in this session, we're going to turn it off. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom out here, and we'll take a look at what we've got down here. I've got a couple of different very basic grayscales or color scales set up here. We've got some blue here on the left and some black over here on the right. Now this one all, all the way over here on the right is actually set up with transparencies. If I move this object you'll see that it's transparent. You can see through it right there. And I'll hit Control Z and go back. I actually think I duplicated that. No I didn't. Okay. Um, take a look over here on the left hand side. We're just going to lasso this blue grayscale or color scale. And we're going to go to bitmaps, convert to bitmap. We're going to go with CMYK. We're going to have anti-aliasing turned off. We don't need a transparent background. We're going to select OK. Now you can see that my color conversion came out a little strange. There's not really the same blue and that's because this blue based on the color management settings that we're working in is probably outside the color gamut. And as I said you can see all that in some other videos in YouTube. I want to left click here, select this object. We'll go bitmaps, convert to bitmaps, We'll select RGB and we'll select OK. And you can see you got a much more accurate color conversion there. So very often when I'm doing my conversions for output to a catalog or the internet or something like that, I'll actually go with a RGB. I just seem to get a better rendering in draw. Next to this we have a grayscale image, which is set up in vector. Or you can see we're going from 100% black down to white. I want to go to bitmaps, convert to bitmap, and this time I'm going to select grayscale and I'm going to select OK. Now what happens here is, is that with my color management settings according to the default installation of draw is not giving me a accurate rendering of grayscale. It's giving me a 37 gray when in reality this should be a zero gray. This here is giving me a 254 which is your white or a 255 would be even better. Now I'm going to hit control Z and I'm going to go back to my tools, color management, default settings, and I'm going to cl click on preserve pure black and I'm going to select OK. Then I'm going to go to bitmap, convert to bitmap, I'm going to go with a grayscale, no anti-aliasing, and no, don't need a transparent background, and I'm going to select OK. Now you'll see that I got I want to get my eyedropper here, that I got a zero gray here or an accurate conversion and I've got a 254 white down here. Now I want to take a look at converting this to a half tone. And I'm going to open up my simple steps here and I'm going to click on convert to half tone. I'm going to select OK. It'll take just a minute to process. Because when we're dealing with spot colors and screen printing, ultimately what we're going to be dealing with is half tones and output to inkjet film and then burning screens and then using a squeegee to push ink through our screen onto our t-shirts. Now what I've got here is I've got a half tone half toned object in draw set up as a monochrome bitmap. And you come down here you can see that our foreground is 100% black. But even with the preserved pure black turned on I still got some information floating around here that I don't want. If I take a look I can see I've got some dots down here in my white that I don't want in my halftones and I don't want in my output. I'm going to hit control Z and I'm going to go back to tools, color management, default settings, and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to 
select from the presets simulated color management off. And I'm going to select OK. Now I'll take this particular vector object here that's set up as a grayscale. Actually, I want to go back, Control Z. There we go. Now I'll go ahead and convert this again. Bitmap, convert to bitmap, grayscale, anti aliasing off, select OK. Then I'll go back to simple steps and I'll do my convert to halftones. And you'll notice that this conversion will be correct color wise even in my monochrome conversion. You'll notice that down here I don't have any color information down here in my white. There aren't any little specks of dot or color down there. So I got an accurate conversion to halftones from simple steps. And we want to be aware of that when we're working with converting to monochrome and dealing with wanting to use monochrome because of its spot color capabilities. Now that we've got this monochrome here, we can see that it's set up as a C0, well, cyan 0, magenta 0, yellow 0, and 100% black. But I can convert that. I'm going to hit Control Z through simple steps. And we'll take a look at this also, and I'll just cover this briefly. I'm going to go ahead and turn on all black. Now, all black is going to convert this to a halftone that will go out through my inkjet, but I'll have in my cyan, magenta, and yellow inkjet cartridges black ink. So what I'm doing is I'm laying down as dark as possible dots I can create when I output. I'm going to go click on to convert to halftone, select OK, and we'll let this process. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of like tricking the system. I'm putting all black ink in every cartridge of my film output, and you can see that down here when I click on this, 100, 100, 100. So all the cartridges in my inkjet start to put black ink down on my film. And we can do this with monochromes in draw by selecting our foreground color. I could click on this and go to my color here, select more, and come here to my model. And you can see under CMYK, I've got 100, 100, 100, 100. And that will cause all black ink to come out through all my cartridges onto my film when I'm outputting my separations. And I just wanted to touch on that briefly. So we can see the power that we have of color management, not only in draw, but also in our output to our inkjets through these monochrome bitmaps in Corel Draw. Looking at monochrome, you can look at here's my RGB image, here's my CMYK image, and I can click on colors over here and nothing will change. I don't really have any color management through color palettes associated with these bitmaps. But with the monochrome, I can come over here and right click to change my foreground and then come up here and left click to change my background color. As you can see right there, now I've got the blue going into the violet. So when I'm working with these monochromes, I get all of this spot color management and color output capability relating to spot colors for t-shirt printing and burning screens that I really don't have when I'm working with these other types of bitmaps. Now that doesn't mean that I don't work with these. I work with these all the time doing web design and other things. But when I'm dealing with apparel design for screen printing, I'm really thinking in raster, okay, where can I leverage the power of monochrome bitmaps in my work? How can I use a monochrome to create an artistic look and design that I can't really have when I'm dealing with vector? And if you look around at the designs and the retail shelves around you, you see a lot of looks and feels that really are difficult to get with vector, but you can get them very easily if you're working with raster, such as distress or watercolor or artistic looks. And that's where monochrome really comes into play with it for us. Also, we use a lot of seamless tiles and textures that we apply through our fashion factory. Now, next to, to this grayscale, I'm going to go back to the original here. And this is the original. I'm going to duplicate this over here, and I'm going to bring this other one over next to it. I don't want that. I'm going to hit Control Z, and I'll go ahead and just scroll down a bit here, lasso this, and bring this one over here next to this. And we're going to go in depth on monochrome now, or at least lay a foundation on it. Looking at this grayscale, I've got my grayscale build, built out based on fill colors or percents of black. You've got 90% here, 80% here. This object, I've built out this grayscale based on transparencies. And you can see that this is 100% K all the way down, but there's some transparency. You can see the page behind the vector objects. I'm going to go ahead and select this, and I'm going to go to bitmaps, convert to bitmap, 
I'm going to go with my grayscale. I'm going to select OK. Now I'm going to do a different conversion. I'm going to go to bitmaps mode. I'm going to go black and white. Now coming through this mode, I'm going to have different options relating to my black and white conversion. I'm going to go ahead and select line art. And then I'm going to zoom out and we'll take a look at this threshold. You'll notice that this threshold is based on grayscales. If I'm back at zero, I don't get any color conversion. Everything is white. If I go up to 100, excuse me, 255, not 100, everything turns black. But as I go back in threshold, Corel will convert levels of grayscale to white. So depending on where your threshold is, that's where Corel is going to convert your pixels to either black or white. Because a one-bit bitmap only has two colors, black or white. There's no spectrum of color or grayscale in one bits. There's either black or white. But Corel does support a transparency in this one-bit black and white bitmap. And that's how we create our grayscales or tints of color working with monochrome is through the application or the use of transparency in the image. I'll go ahead and select OK. One thing I do want to point out, if you try to do this through bitmaps, convert to bitmap, and you go with black and white, you're not going to get any options. It'll just convert it. But if you go through bitmap mode, you do get some options. So let's take this now and convert it to, let's say, a grayscale again. Convert bitmap, grayscale, select OK. And I want to hit Control-Z. I actually did a one bit there by accident. Bitmap, control convert to bitmap and I want to go to grayscale 8-bit and select OK. Now I've got this grayscale here. I can go to bitmap mode black and white and that's where I get the options in my conversion. You won't get those in your convert to bitmap. You have to go through mode and then you've got halftone different things here. Like if I go with Stuky and select OK you can see that what happened there is they used a dither dot pattern to create the levels of grayscale. Now let's take a look at transparencies relating to this. And this is where you want to really be aware of what's going on with monochromes and transparency because we hear so often from people they don't understand what's going on with these bitmaps. But if I take this and I go to bitmap, convert to bitmap, and I select grayscale 8-bit, but this is based on transparencies, and select transparent background and select OK, I now have a grayscale bitmap with a channel or transparency applied to it that they call an alpha channel. If I take that and I go bitmap mode black and white you'll notice that I don't see anything here in draw. That's because there's a transparency in there and Corel is going to carry it into my monochrome. I'll select OK. Now I have a monochrome bitmap set up with a white background and a black foreground. Now, here in Corel's color management, it looks like fill and outline. So your background is your fill, and your outline is your foreground. Now, if I come up here and left-click in the X in the color palette, and my fill becomes none, you can see that what we have here is a raster or bitmap object that has spot color properties and functionality associated with it. I'm going to go ahead and right-click and send this to the back of the page and we'll fill that with let's say a blue right there and you can see the transparency going through the blue now if I come up here and right click on say a Pantone red there's my foreground color and if I take my eyedropper here you can see it's giving me this color of being 100 percent Pantone Rubine Red C down here it's going through the transparency and showing me the CMYK color that's in the rectangle behind it. So what I've got here is a spot color raster object that I can manage the colors with very similar to the way in which I manage colors in working with vector objects in draw. Now looking at this potential you can understand why and you can see the training series on the sites why we like to work with these because if I'm doing output for screen printing color separations now I have a raster object that can have a spot color applied to it it's got a transparency channel and I can use the tools in draw to manage 
what's going on with these pixels and make effects and looks for my designs that are very difficult or I can't even make with vector but I can make them very easily in draw working with the tools in photo paint and Corel draw but yet have all that set up as a spot color for my output through simple steps or through Corel draws color separation etc when I do my print output so this is just a foundation of understanding how these monochromes work and we'll continue in our next session.